Ausschnitt. Hey everybody, it's Benny One and I'm back at you with another episode review for Marvel's What If and we're on episode 3 and it is called The World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes, everyone. That's correct. And this episode actually kind of deviates from what the first two episodes were like because this one actually takes place during a few different movies in the MCU where the first two took place during a single movie each like they were just about guardians of the galaxy was episode two and then the first captain america movie but obviously the timelines were altered in both of the episodes because that's what this whole show is about the watcher is our narrator and he's guiding us through this crazy alternate multiverse what if scenario shit in this show and i'm loving it so far this episode right here was fantastic probably the best episode so far and i thought the first one was really good so so yeah the movies that this one involves is iron man 2 the first thor movie and the incredible hulk that's right the black sheep movie of the mcu the edward norton bruce banner hulk movie that came out after iron man it's the Black Sheep movie in the MCU that people, I think some people forget sometimes that that actually is in the MCU because Tony appears in the end credit scene and talks to Ross at the end of that movie. So, and I love what they did with The Incredible Hulk. The part in The Incredible Hulk that's in this movie, whew, we'll get there, we'll get there. So, let's, we have all sorts of characters in this movie. Um, and I'll tell you the actors that actually came back in this episode to do their characters voices um let's see here we have nick fury obviously samuel jackson came back um colson was played by clark gregg once again uh, it's always good to see him on a screen whether it's animated or not um bruce banner and the hulk was mark ruffalo um lady sif was jamie alexander um we got to see a different version of Betty Ross in this episode, too. Kind of maybe what the MCU version would have been. Because um, they didn't get um, oh, Liv Tyler to come do the voice, obviously. And Jeremy Rayner was back as Hawkeye. Tom Hiddleston was back as Loki. That's right. All of these characters are in this episode. Um, and then Michael Douglas came back to play Hank Pym. Um, crazy, crazy different take on Hank Pym in this episode. He's actually really important to the, the story in this episode. So Captain Marvel's in this movie or this episode at one point. Thor. I, it's crazy. Black Widow has a big role in this because so what happens is is the episode picks up with Nick Fury telling Coulson or telling um, Natasha, Black Widow, that he had an idea of a group of beings, you know, the Avengers speech that he gives, you know, when he's trying to get the Avengers together. And they go see Tony, that scene from Iron Man 2, where he's sitting up in the donut after he's hung over, after him and Ro uh, Rhodey got into a fight. So, and when they're sitting in that donut shop, that diner, they give him the shot, you know, to buy him some time because of the poison that he had in his system because of his arc reactor in his chest. And he freaking dies. He just falls over and dies. So right away, S.H.I.E.L.D. is taking freaking Natasha and going to question her and everything. And she's like, I didn't kill him. And Nick's like, I know you didn't kill him, but we have to follow the rules that S.H.I.E.L.D. has in place. So they take her. She escapes. And then it's basically Fury and her and Coulson are trying to figure out who did this. And then in the process of that, we jump over to the Thor movie where they find the hand, Coulson finds the hammer, you know, and then they set up a perimeter around it. And then Thor shows up to go get the hammer and Hawkeye's up in his, you know, lift thing. And he's got an arrow pointed at him and he asks if he can shoot him. And Fury's like, no, just wait. I want to watch this. He somehow fires an arrow and he was like, I did not shoot that arrow. So 
boom, Thor's dead. So right away we got Iron Man, Thor, both dead. They're both dead. Before the Avengers could even get formed, they're gone. So now they're trying to figure out who they're, someone's trying to take out all of the people that they were going to recruit for the Avengers. They're going to take them all out. So they realize that Bruce Banner is a threat. Like he's in trouble. Like he could possibly be killed even though he can't be killed because he's the Hulk. So, and that's where Natasha goes to Betty to have the syringe thingy that she stuck in Tony's neck looked at and that's where she said that like the shot wasn't even given a projectile was fired from the needle and i was like huh i didn't quite put two and two together at that point but yeah so and then she realizes that bruce is there because of a little pizza disguise and this is where we literally get the edward norton hulk movie at the college where they all pull all the military vehicles pull up with ross and the guy that turns into abomination to fight him and he's in that big window hallway thing they recreate that shit with mark ruffalo's hulk awesome it was so cool to see um and then right before he turned into the hulk he got shot with something and ross was like hold your fire and everyone's like we didn't fire so the mystery person that's killing all the recruits to be avengers shot him in the shoulder and after he hulks out and fights them a little bit he starts to like blow up even more and get bigger and bigger and bigger and he literally blows up like a balloon and pops and bruce banner hulk done iron man down thor down hulk down three of the big guys already gone everybody and then natasha's the next one to go and you see her in a dark room of the computer get beat up by nothing just nothing and that is when i was like holy shit it has to be hank pym it's got to be hank because it can't it can't be freaking it just it can't be paul rudd's ant man it can't i was like it's hank it's hank pym i cannot believe that something something went wrong with hank pym and she said it's all about hope his daughter his daughter his daughter so Nick Fury figures out that he's talking about his daughter. He almost called Captain Marvel because he got into his car and he pulled out the old 90s pager and he was like going to call her, but then he realized what she was talking about, the hope thing. Um, but before all that happened, but before the hope thing, when he finally goes to confront Hank Pym, Loki, I got a moth up here, Loki shows up with an army from Asgard because they killed Thor. So they're coming there and Loki basically is like, I will destroy this world to find out who killed the Prince of Asgard. And him and Nick Fury come to an agreement that as long as they deliver the person that did it, the body, they don't even care, we're good. So they're working together in a way. So, so yeah, then Nick Fury confronts Hank in the cemetery where Hope's uh, grave is at and he is yellow jacket that's right he was pissed because shield he blamed shield for his wife dying and for his daughter hope dying on a mission so he turned evil and turned into yellow jacket instead man and nick fury beats the living shit out of him even when he shrinks and everything but then you find out it was loki because a bunch of nick furies appear so he was using his magic and his spells and they beat him and they take him and then um we go to colson and fury talking about how the, you know the avengers was this idea and there's still heroes out there and they show fury going to where i captain america was frozen in the ice still and he swipes off the ice and the snow and you can see the shield so and captain marvel showed up at the end of the episode so who knows where this is going so because i know that these episodes are all going to somehow kind of be tied together because i know t'challa is going to be in another episode so and i know captain marvel is so who knows what's going on but the end of the episode 
Loki decided he was going to stay another day. He's like, I think I'm going to stay on Midgard, what he told Fury. And then it goes to Friday because it bounces from day to day, like a black screen with Monday and boom. And so it, when it hits Friday, um, Loki is at the United Nations and he basically has taken over the planet. He convinced all governments to cease and desist and they're all going to get along and they will bend to his rule and bend the knee to him and he rules the entire planet and that's where the episode ends with his army and everything so basically the events of avengers ended up coming to fruition with him he didn't even have to destroy anything they just all were like okay you can be in charge that's where it ended so i was like holy shit so great episode great freaking episode i love what they did with this episode so this show is fantastic i'm loving what they're doing with this so far i'm excited for more episodes so i hope you guys enjoyed that spoiler filled review thanks for watching and i'll be catching you on the tube laters because i have spoken <laughs>